Do you see my full screen now? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Hello again to the people connected at this uh, another session. I'm gonna talk about what we have been doing on functional feed additives and diets to reduce the impact of enteromix mule. Uh, this is the content of my talk. Uh, I will start by talking about the problem we aim to solve, which have been our tools, which have been the additives and diets and the improved results and the conclusions from our work. So the problem we aim to solve, you have heard about it a bunch of times today, but those that have not been connected through all the time, I'm going to go very briefly. We wanted to solve this parasitic enteritis, which is produced by the Mixosone enteromix mule. Right now is an endemic parasite in the Mediterranean area, but it also affects other areas in the world, even in, in Japan. And this parasite, um, one of the effects that produces that fish stop feeding the, because of they produce this anorexia that uh, turns into, into a low uh, growth and uh, low weight gain in the fish and also produces effects on different hematological parameters like reducing the hematocrite and the hemoglobin. Some fish can become really very cathectic and swollen abdomen and some mortalities. So this has an impact on the industry and economic losses. And today we don't have effective vaccines yet, so we are in the track, no effective treatments. So we think that uh, we move in the future for obtaining different additives and diet that can mitigate the impact of this parasite. And this is why I'm gonna talk to you now. So for doing this, the tools that we have available in our lab at the Institute of Agriculture of Torre Lazar, first of all, is having an experimental model of transmission. Because without this, we cannot try any diet, any additive, any anything. And right now we are using um, commonly two different ways of infecting the fish, which is by effluent. This means that we have a tank with infected donor fish and the water from this tank goes to another tank with naive fish. And the other method that we are using that is not the natural way, but it allows us to infect a lot of fish at the same time in a more homogeneous way is the anal intubation using intestinal scrapings from donor infected fish. For the parasite diagnosis, we have already talked about this this morning. We have two tools. Uh, we can take samples, lethal samples and non-lethal samples with uh, quotient saps from the, taken from the rectum of the fish. And this can be analyzed uh, for two, by qPCR so we can know the copies of parasite DNA per fish. And obviously we have the histology that allows us to know the extension of the infection through the intestinal tract because these parasites starts the infection by the posterior part of the intestine, then it goes to the anterior part and finally infects the middle part of the intestine. And the histology obviously allows us to determine which are the stages that are in the, part, in the, in the intestine, if we only have trophozoites or we have spores. And finally, the other tool we have is just to measure the growth of the fish, which how is the growth going on, the weight, the length, the feed conversion rate, the, um, the condition factor, etc. So with this in mind, uh, these were the experiments we have run. We have run many different trials and today for time being, I'm only showing the, the three best of them. Um, they have the, the different colors for the different tests. Um, these three tests uh, were run at different timings. We have, uh, the, these are the three different ones, the Gustor BP70, the Sanacore, and the Shield. The Gustor BP70 was run for six weeks. The fish were fed this product before the challenge and then during all the infection time. And this was used at a level of 0.4%. And this Gustor BP is a product produced by Norel, now a bonnet company is a um, sodium butyrate that is protected with a vegetable fat that allows the active principle to be active along the whole intestinal tract so it has more effect that without being protected. And 
The, in the case of the Sanacore that is produced by Aviseo, we tested two doses, 02 and 04. And this is a health promoting additive. It's a mixture of organic acids, inactivated cheese, and yeast extracts with herbal extracts, all combined with a mineral carrier. In the case of shield, it's not really a, an additive, it's a diet that includes different functional ingredients like probiotics, tributyrin, which is also a short chain fatty acid, and natural extract. And it has a specific for, formulation designed to support damaged organs and impair physiological condition. And in general, it has a balance of micro and my, micronutrients and is uh, done by a scratching company. So with this introduction, uh, we use uh, anal intubation in the two first uh, trials and effluent in the last trial. And these are the results. In the case of the Gusto BP-17, we tested three diets. The first one is a control diet produced by Biomar. Then we use a D3, which is a high vet vegetable diet with a high level of inclusion of vegetables to replace um, fish meal and fish oil. And then D4 diet was the same one as D3, but with the addition of BP-7. And the prevalence of infection in the three diets, you can see it was really high. We didn't succeed in improving the prevalence of infection. We had a small in, smaller intensity of infection for the intensity. And when we look at the extension of infection by histology, we see that really D3 uh, was more or less, in the case of the anterior, improving the uh, effect of the D4, sorry, was improving the, uh, the bad effect of the extreme vegetable diet, but still was higher in all cases than the control diet. So you will say, so what? What's the good thing about this, these diets that we were trying? So the answer is here. The weight loss uh, was higher in the extreme vegetable diet. As you can see in here, the specific growth rate <coughs> was very much decreased. But with the additive, it was improved and arrived to the same level as the control diet. And when we look at the condition factor, we see again the same effect, the big reduction in the D1 and D3 which was not found with the D4 diet. The condition factor was not reduced. So when we say control and recipient, in this case means uh, non-challenge and challenge fish. <coughs> Sorry. So this means that being infected does not always mean being diseased. You can be with a parasite and you don't have the disease outcome of the, in this case, the weight loss. So if we go to the, um, to the second trial with the Sanacore, the results were the following. Um, we found that the Sanacore fed group presented a lower prevalence of infection and a lower parasite load. This can be seen here very clearly with the abundance of the DNA copies per fish, that they were significantly less than the zero level diet. And also if we look at the histology, uh, we can see that the Sanacore fed groups has a less extension of the infection along the intestinal tract, especially the highest dose. We can see that the percentage of fish that have more one section infected is really lower. And if we look at about the growth performance, we can also see that supplemented diets mitigated the anorexia and the growth arrestment that is observed in diet A that has zero uh, sanacore. You see the food intake is not reduced at all with the highest rate. And the weight loss is not that much as in the zero. And also the specific growth rate uh, is not that much as in the zero diet. If we have a look at the histology, um, the C diet, the CD4, we see that it has a less inflammation level of the submucosa. We compare this part is the zero. We compare the inflammation is very high in here and not that much in here. <coughs> Sorry. And in turn, we have 
a lot of lymphocytes at the base of the epithelium. So we moved to the shield trial. What we found was the following. Too much talking today. <laughs> uh, if we move to the, we see the intensity of the infection was really very much reduced by the 85%, the mean intensity of infection of the parasite. And as for the mean prevalence, well, it was reduced, but not that much. And if you look at this level 30% in the control group, this prevalence of infection was co low compared to what normally achieved by every infection. You remember in the previous slides, we have 70% in the anal intubation of zone. And if we look at the reduction of the weight gain, yes, we see a reduction of the weight gain in both groups. Uh, so in this case was not uh, that good as in, in the other tests that we, uh, I have just presented like in Sanacore and BP. So the conclusions are the following. Well, we cannot get 0% infected fish with these additives and diets. Fish are still parasiticide. They could pass infection to other fish. But on the positive part is that the intestinal health is improved so it's useful for other enteritis, maybe not related to this enteromixum. We can lower parasite prevalence and intensity with some of them. And in other cases, even if we don't lower, fish can cope with the parasite. So we are talking about resilience. As fish do not have the main disease size, which is the loss of weight, uh, I think we are filling the gap of not having a treatment and the industry can reduce the economic losses with some of these diets. And most of this publication has already been, um, most of this information has already been published in different articles, which are all of them open access, are accessible through the webpage of our project. And, and finally, I would like to thank uh, not only the fish pathology group that has been involved in here, but also the Nutrigenomic and fish growth endocrinology group that has been very much involved in all the nutrition um, aspects of our uh, research, and also the different uh, companies involved in the trials like Norel, Adiseo, Scretin, and Biomar for the DP17 